Coming up on this edition of the Super Review. The Board of Education approved a $420 million bond proposal set to be presented to the voters on the May 7th ballot. District representatives are here to share what is in this bond proposal. Beginning in the 2024-25 school year, all incoming ninth grade students will need to meet the new state credit requirements. Learn more about the new requirements, how they will impact your child, and the district's plans for implementation with its current curriculum. And on How Are the Children, Superintendent Dr. Anna Stubblefield will close with a final segment with students sharing their thoughts on today's topics and much more. You're watching the Super Review. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into the Super Review. I'm Dr. Anna Stubblefield, Superintendent of Schools. I am looking forward to this first segment as we talk about the upcoming bond proposal that reflects our commitment to fostering an environment that enhances learning for all students. Before we get into that discussion, I want to share this message with you from myself and Board President Randy Lopez. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anna Stubblefield, Superintendent of Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools. And I'm Randy Lopez, President of the Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools Board of Education. Dr. Stubblefield and I have some very important information to share with you about an upcoming bond election that will impact many schools and facilities across the district. On January 9th, the Board of Education approved a $420 million bond proposal set to be presented to voters on May 7th, 2024. This bond includes the rebuilding of Central and Argentine Middle Schools, replacing older elementary buildings, and eliminating mobile classrooms, a state-of-the-art public library, an aquatic center, and comprehensive renovations to existing school campuses. The recommended facilities upgrades and improvements are based on input gathered from students, parents, staff, and community members like yourself through a facilities assessment survey. The proposal reflects a commitment to fostering an environment that enhances safety and learning for all students, aligning with the district's long-term plan spanning over a decade. We encourage you to learn as much as you can about this bond election so that you can make an informed decision. Please visit the district's website at kckschools.org slash bond. Joining me to discuss more about this topic is our Chief Operations Officer, Steve Lilly. Hello, Steve. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to see you. Um, we visited it earlier this semester uh, about the facilities master plan and now it's led to the current bond propo proposal. We've been asked by some of the community why another bond election now when we just passed one in 2016. Well in 2016 we were able to address a lot of schools and a lot of our needs. Um, we were able to work on some of our deferred maintenance uh, needs, but certainly we're not able to fix everything in the district at the same time. Uh, from the very beginning, there was a, a plan for a phase two bond project. Um, because of COVID and other things that happened that kind of got delayed. Uh, consequently, we felt like we needed to go through a facility study to make sure that we knew exactly what our greatest needs were going into the potential of another bond project. And we feel like this uh, has really done a nice job of identifying the greatest needs in our district. Okay. Um, can you share what is included in this uh, current bond proposal? There's a pretty extensive list of projects. Uh, we are looking at reducing our footprint a little bit. Right now we are anticipating um, moving from six elementaries to three elementaries in some of our areas. That would be a combination of Emerson and New Stanley. Uh, that would be on the Emerson site. Uh, Silver City and Noble Prentice, which would be on the Noble Prentice site. And Lindbergh and Eugene Ware, and that would be housed at the Eugene Ware site. It involves two middle schools, uh, Central Middle School, Argentine Middle School, uh, a district aquatic center, up to $20 million in support for uh, 
a main library. Uh, classroom editions at Emmy Pearson and Whittier, uh, high school gym editions at both Schlegel and Harmon, and some pretty significant deferred maintenance projects throughout the district. Okay, and um, I'm sure we've said this previously, all that detail information can be found on our website under um, the link with the bond information. Um, can you talk a little bit about how these projects were identified or determined because um, if you go to the website, you'll see there was an extensive list there, but how were these particular projects prioritized? Sure, uh, I think from the very beginning, we uh, at the very beginning stages of the facility study, we um, made sure that we were surveying community, staff, students uh, to get their thoughts and ideas on our greatest needs. Uh, we have had extensive community work uh, in our community vision team. We have utilized an educational vision, uh, educational vision team and our uh, facilities vision team as well to help us kind of direct our conversations and try to uh, determine our greatest needs for these projects. Okay. Um as we're about to wrap up, I'll add a, ask a two-fold question. Would, will every school, school benefit or be touched in this bond? And how can um, community members or families who are watching this um, have more opportunities to learn about the bond? Well, I think uh, when you're talking about all facilities uh, being touched, that is kind of a testament to our 2016 bond. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our new buildings that, uh, that we were able to uh, open at that time, we won't be doing extensive work in any of those buildings because mm -hmm. they're in good shape and they're, uh, they're certainly meeting our needs. But throughout the district, we're gonna be working to, to try to update all of our facilities that will better meet the needs of our students. As far as uh, parents, finding, you know, parents, community members, students wanting more information, first place I think is a great way to uh, figure out what's going on. Uh, you can get a lot of detail about the projects is our website. Um, really pleased with uh, the direction that that's going. I think it is very informative. Um, if anybody has, we've been, you know, trying to get out and make sure that everybody's aware of uh, what this involves. So we've had a lot of community meetings so far. We'll continue to do that. We will also make sure that uh, if anybody has any, any upcoming events or anything that they would like us to speak at, if they would reach out to uh, Edwin Birch and communications or the communications team, we can uh, certainly try to attend that and, and uh, give a presentation and overview of the projects as well. Well, thank you, Steve, for this very informative conversation. If you want more information about the bond proposal, please visit the district website at kckschools.org. Community partnerships are very important when it comes to providing support for our students. In addition, interdepartment partnerships are also valuable and provide opportunities for students to thrive in all aspects of their learning. The Athletic, Communications, and Diploma Plus departments have partnered to launch the KCKPS Sports Network, which live streams high school basketball games on its YouTube channel. This was our first pilot program that we are looking forward to expanding coverage of other sports next year. Let's take a moment to hear how the district's athletic director, Samuel Simmons, is helping our coaches and school athletic directors to get better every day. Athletics is, is my world. It's my life. It's uh, my, my whole life is revolved around being a part of an athletic team. From my youth days at Coronado Middle School, 
up to Schlegel High School and, and on through college and professional. So I know what it what, it, what the athletics done for me and how far I was able to take those. So if I'm able to, to, to share some of my experiences with uh, with our youth and some of our ADs and administrators, and I just think and put my little fingerprint or footprint on things in KCK where I'm born and raised, you know, it just it brings me joy to try to do what I can to lift up and build up and build and sustain some of the things that we, the great things that are going on in KCK. The day in the life of the KCK PS District Athletic Director, it's always filled with just getting to still know all my staff that I deal with, my ADs, my coaches, trying to be as present as possible at, at athletic events. Evaluating processes and procedures on how we operate whether it's game day processes and procedures, just kind of reviewing and, and partnering with my ADs to see are there some, some ways that we can kind of work a little bit more efficiently and effectively to just how we operate as a, as a department. Could be fundraising, eligibility, you know, making sure all of our Acacia requirements and expectations are in place. You know, so just operational things that, that need to just kind of be documented and ensure that all the ADs and administrators know exactly how we, how we function. To be better every day, to me, that means showing up with a, with a lot of energy, positivity, two of my best attributes, just trying to put my best foot forward every day, bringing a smile to those that I interact with on a daily basis and just getting to know all of my colleagues, district level colleagues on a regular basis. And again, just trying to infect them with my positivity and high energy. In the KCK PS Athletic Department, we're getting better every day. Thank you, Sam and coaches, for all that you do to support our student athletes. There are some important changes to high school graduation requirements that will affect the class of 2028 in Kansas City, Kansas public schools. Beginning the 24-25 school year, all incoming ninth grade students will need to meet new state credit requirements to qualify for graduation. Cole Amaya, the Director of Secondary Diploma Plus Curriculum and Instructional Programs, joins us to provide more information on what this means and what students and parents should expect from these changes. Hi, Cole. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, so I need to put on my glasses to read my <laughs> questions. Um, what are the changes students can expect with the new graduation requirements and when will they take effect? So they will take effect for the incoming ninth graders next year. And so um, the major changes for the requirements are really twofold. One, the, two, the class of 2028 is going to be required to um, attain what we call state assets. Um, but those are in aligned with already our diploma pluses. Okay. Um, and then um, they will require um, a full STEM credit, a half health credit, and a financial literacy credit. And so those are really the big changes. Okay, and you talked a little bit about it already aligning with our Diploma Plus mm -hmm. um, um, endorsements or credentials. Uh, is there anything else that we would know how it impacts what we already have in place or are there things that we're doing to make sure that we are meeting those? So yes, we actually have uh, pretty high standards of Diploma Pluses and um, our kids are currently already uh, and have been ahead of the game for a while okay. in attaining Diploma Pluses. We're building a lot of programming around Diploma Pluses currently. Um, uh, the assets from the state, we will um, work with buildings and develop programming around those assets to make sure it just gives more opportunities essentially for kids to get more Diploma Pluses. That is awesome to hear. Um, how, how, are, how is the district or how are we informing parents and students about these new graduation requirements? So we're, uh, it is currently on our website and we are putting together some more communication opportunities. So uh, we should see more stuff coming out on social media. Um, there should be more communication coming out from buildings. Um, again, students are currently enrolling, so they're having these conversations with counselors and families at FA Nights. I think they had some um, information about it there as well. Yeah, so uh, Commissioner Watson several years ago started the Kansas CAN mm -hmm. and the post-secondary success. How will these new requirements prepare our students for post-graduation when they leave um, Kansas City, Kansas public schools? So I think in terms of, so I'll go to the STEM credits for a second. Um, really we're adjusting courses and creating more advanced uh, tech courses, more advanced um, 
uh, mathematic courses, uh, really just to ensure that kids are ready for an ever-changing job market, right? So these are different curriculums, these are different programs, a lot more PLTW courses, um, a lot more hands-on courses, things like that. So things that um, just make sure that our kids stay ahead for when they leave. Okay. Um, so we've talked a little bit about how these new requirements enhanced our Diploma Plus and what we're currently doing. Is there anything that you feel like um, our parents and students need to know regarding this? Um, or do you feel like we've covered it all? Um, I, I'm excited about the changes uh, overall because I think it's going to give us more opportunities to uh, create new courses that I think kids are going to be really interested in that are going to support um, our pluses and our pathways. Um, so I just I would just add that piece. Um, and so they should uh, it'll take a little while to build that out, but they should be excited to uh, and, and that's coming down the road. One of the things that I'll take a moment to highlight is that um, currently our students are the class of 20 to 23 when they graduated, 61% of our students graduated with a diploma plus or what the state would deem as the state assets. So um, we, as you stated, are on target and ahead of the game. And I'm excited because we have our North Star of 100% graduating by 2031. But with these new enhancements, do you think we'll get there before 2031? Uh, yes, <laughs> we will. I have no doubt we will. Uh, we are not far off from every kid graduating with an asset or a diploma plus two of them um, within the next few years. Yeah, that's awesome. And it will uh, just make our community stronger when we think about the workforce and um, just growing Kansas City, Kansas. So I'm excited about it as well. So Mr. Amai, I wanna thank you for sharing this important information with our parents and students today. Please visit the Diploma Plus website for more information about the upcoming changes in the course requirements. We will be sharing information with parents and students throughout the remainder of the year. So look for this information coming from your school in the district. February 5th through February 9th was National School Counselors Week. As vital school leadership team members, school counselors create a school culture of success for all students. At KCKPS, we know that school counselors are essential to the academic success, social emotional learning, and college and career readiness of our students. During National School Counseling Week, we would like to take a moment and recognize all the hard work our counseling staff does. KCKPS school counselors are here to help students fully understand the value of their learning by highlighting the importance of education and guiding students to understand how their academic achievements contribute to their personal and professional growth. Counselors actively work to empower our students by providing support, encouragement, and positive reinforcement to help them build confidence and believe in their abilities. By recognizing that emotional intelligence is just as important as academic achievement, students develop into the best version of themselves and have the skills and mindset necessary for success. In recent years, a school counselor's role has expanded significantly and is more critical than ever. Students are navigating many modern day challenges that are sometimes bigger than their academics. Counselors in your child's school are also present in classrooms providing valuable instruction to students. The instruction will look different depending on the age of the learner. In elementary school, students receive guidance on relationship building, emotional regulation, and self-advocacy. While students at the middle and high school levels benefit from instruction around more complex subjects such as identity, self-discovery, and conflict resolution. At KCKPS, we know the importance of providing our students with support as they navigate any and every challenge. School counselors are equipped to address a diverse range of challenges by nurturing the overall well-being and success of each student. If you would like to know more about your school's counselor and how they can support your child, please contact your school. The school counselors at KCKPS are helping to make us better every day. Although the recognition of National School Counselors Week has passed, their hard work and dedication has no expiration date. 
Please join us in continuing the appreciation for all that they do each and every day to maximize student success, promoting access and equity for all students. This last segment is my favorite because it's all about our students. This is an opportunity for us to hear their thoughts and perspectives about the subjects of their choice. Joining us today, I will have each of them to introduce themselves, tell where they go to school, if you're in a college or a career pathway, and then we'll jump into, and what year you are, and then we'll jump into our conversation. So we can start with you. My name is Shanna Buckner. I am a junior at Alfred Fairfax Academy. Okay. My name is Amaya Chapman, and I am a senior at Washington High School, and uh, I know my major. I'm going into journalism. Okay. My name is Lennon Monroe. I go to Sumner Academy, and I'm a senior, and I am planning and majoring physical therapy. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Um, it's always, this is the favorite, my favorite part, because you can ask whatever you want. I may or may not be able to answer it, but it also gives me an opportunity to hear from you about the things that you heard us discussing earlier. So let's start with the first topic with the bond. Do you all have any questions about that? Um, or what, when you were seeing it, what resonated with you? Um, what resonated with me is uh, knowing that the class of 2028, uh, their graduation requirements are a little bit different and mm -hmm. having younger siblings that are still gonna be in school by the time I go off to college, it kinda excites me mm -hmm. to see that the requirements are a little bit different and that they're preparing them for college and things on later in life. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, uh, Mr. Amaya talked about like the state assets or our Diploma Plus um, credentials. Most of you probably will like graduate with a Diploma Plus if you are have done a college um, courses or if you have some other things, but um, that is exciting and now it's a requirement by the state, so it just reinforces what we've been doing all along. Anything else? Um, um, I agree with her. Mm -hmm. um, it may be a little bit challenging and I think that's really what we need, a challenge, but I hope there's also a good guidance for that challenge for the upcoming students. Yeah, yeah, that that's great to hear. So I, I do have a question just about that. When you said guidance, what are you thinking when you hear that? What do you think we need to do? Or what are the things that we have in place that you'll be like, yep, this would help me to know what I'm supposed to do? Um, just like checking up on students and if there's an area that they're struggling in that they really try and reinforce and help them grow in that area. Okay. For some students, it may be hard to ask for help. So at least giving them a little push Okay, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Anything with you, London? Um, I had a question about the aquatic center. Okay. Um, and is that gonna be free for the community and then also would there be uh, swimming lessons um, yeah. with that? So that is a great question. Um, if the bond passes on May 7th, one of the major projects is a district aquatic center. Um, we haven't, we don't know where it'll be located at yet, but we uh, hope to have that information out to the community sooner than later once we identify some spots. But what will happen with the Aquatic Center is during the school day, um, those schools, specifically our middle schools and maybe some of our high schools, the high schools that don't have it, I think Sumner, Wyandotte, does Washington have a pool? No, and Washington has a pool, the other high schools don't we could offer courses during the school day and transport students over there, especially when you think about your block schedules at the high school and next year middle school will be moving to a block. Um, it also will allow us to introduce swimming at the middle school level around um, their um, the courses like PE and those kind of things. It would be available to the community. We would enter into a, um, um, uh, MOU or we would do things in partnership with uh, programs that we currently have partnerships with like Parks and Rec and the YMCA. Um, I don't know. I mean, our goal would always be to offer things um, if we can do it for free, for free, but at a affordable rate so that it's accessible to all of our um, community. But during the day and through school programming, it definitely would not cost our students anything um, and when it's a part of the curriculum. 
One of the things we also that I'm going to take a moment to plug, currently we do have an existing uh, partnership with the Parks and Recs and um, the YMCA where we have learned to swim. And during the school year is primarily with our um, elementary students who are in kids zone. But during the summer, um, we do offer um, swim lessons when in part of the extended learning summer learning we have in the past for our middle schoolers and our high schoolers we are expanding that partnership in the future so that we can train high school students to be lifeguards so we have lots of uh, things in motion and this aquatic center would just allow us to reach a greater number of students and if you get your lifeguard certificate that is one of the Diploma Plus, um, it would be like an indus industry recognized credential that even if you're in journalism while you're in college, you can go be a lifeguard somewhere if you had that. All right, and my next question was about the library. When mm -hmm. will that come and when will that be happening? So the library, um, there's already $21 million that um, has been collected from uh, mill, um, mill levies towards the library. Um, after the May 7th vote, um, if it passes, that would allow that project to be accelerated. So I would imagine once a um, location is identified, they would break ground. Um, if it's in space, in place, they could break ground as early as this fall. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly how long that takes, but the library would probably be one of the first things that you see in motion because you don't necessarily have to move students or figure out like work around a uh, school year timeline. Yeah. And my next question, you said the votes. Um, how does that work and how can people vote or is there a way that we can yeah. have our opinion about the library? Yeah. So if you're 18, you can register to vote mm -hmm. um, and you can vote however your heart desires. It's a simple yes or no vote. I can't tell you how to okay. vote as an employee of the district, but if you're 18, you can register to vote in the election. So anybody who lives in the Kansas City, Kansas school district boundaries and they're registered, um, I think the deadline to register is early April. Um, we'll make sure that we put mm -hmm. that in there based off your question. And um, as if you're 18, seniors in high school, before that you can register to vote to express your opinion about the bond. You can also, I will encourage you to go look at the information on the website so you can see all the other things that are included in there. Okay. Yes. Well, um, if you all don't have any last words, I do want to thank you uh, for being open and participating in this lively discussion with me. Now let's take a moment to hear about some of our top highlights around the district that you may have missed. Hello, I'm Kamora Bettis from J.C. Harmon High School, and here are your district highlights. The Athletics Department and Health Services at KCKPS have new life-saving equipment thanks to a special grant. Both groups have received brand new AEDs courtesy of a $25,700 grant. AEDs are used to help people experiencing sudden cardiac arrest. The devices can analyze the heart's rhythm and if necessary, deliver an electrical shock to help restart the heart. The grant came from a Crux KC, which is an organization that helps provide healthcare services and education to the Kansas City community. A new program that helps students improve their reading skills is now underway at Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools. The program called Book Buddies is a collaboration between Lindbergh Elementary and FL Schlegel High School. Students from Schlegel will meet at Lindbergh twice a week and read to younger students. Black History Month celebrations are happening across Kansas City, Kansas public schools. Elementary, middle, and high school's leaders have planned festive celebrations, lessons, and projects to honor the month. The lessons are part of the National Black History Month, which is an annual celebration each February focused on achievements by African Americans in a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Students at Eisenhower Middle School got a big surprise when international rap star and Kansas City icon Tech 9 stopped by their school. 
The rapper best known for the popular Kansas City Chiefs song, Red Kingdom, was there as part of the school's Black History program. Tech 9 rapped two songs to lift up the crowd, but before he left, he encouraged every student to dream big and work hard. That is a look at a few of highlights and what's happening in Kansas City, Kansas public schools. I'm Kamora Bettis from JC Harman. Back to you, Dr. Stubblefield. Thank you, Kamora. Great job. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Super Review. You can watch the program on KCKPS TV channel 18 on Spectrum, live stream on the district website at kckschools.org or on the district's YouTube channel. I wanna thank all of our guests for joining us today and helping facilitate the important discussions around these topics. See you next time on the Super Review.